Good morning, friends. It's great to be with you this Tuesday morning. I want to encourage you to grab your hot coffee, grab your hot tea, and let's dive into God's Word together. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to be picking up the story in verse 1. And we're going to be looking at what true ministry looks like as Paul describes it to us. And I want to encourage, as we do every day, if you have any prayer requests and you're with us on Facebook, you could always type those into the comment section. When you see a prayer request come across, let's be sure that we're replying to it so that we can be praying for one another. And if you just found us on Facebook, I want to encourage you to follow us so that you'll get all the updates when we go live every morning on BibleCast as well as our weekend services and other services that we offer. And if you're with us on any of the other platforms and we can pray for you, you can email us at biblecast at tfc.org. As you can tell, we're not at home this morning. Kim and I are down in the DFW area getting ready to go to work on our NOTA app, our digital discipleship app, and continue to move forward with that project. So certainly we would appreciate your prayers as we're engaging in that work this week. All right, here we go. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 in verse 1. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 in verse 1. Paul says, Now, since we are God's co-workers, we beg you not to take God's marvelous grace for granted allowing it to have no effect on your lives. Now, we see what Paul is getting into here, and he's really going to be transitioning in the next several Bible cast days. He's going to be talking about our personal move towards greater holiness. In other words, as Christians, we should have lives that look different. And when we think about what the true ministry of a Christian looks like, what does it mean once we accept Jesus, and how do we move forward? Paul's going to begin to describe that for us. <clears throat> and here we see he's saying, don't take God's grace for granted. In other words, are all your sins forgiven? Of course they are. That's what Jesus did on the cross for us. He took care of all of it. But don't treat it lightly. Don't use that as an excuse to do whatever it is that you want to do and just take grace for granted. He goes on and says in verse 2, he says, For he says, I listened to you at the time of my favor. And the day when you needed salvation, I came to your aid. And so this is a quote from Isaiah 49, 8. He says, so I listened to you in my time of favor. It says God speaking to his people. And in the day you needed salvation, I came to your aid. God says, I came and I took care of you, but don't take advantage of it is ultimately Paul's point here. He continues and says, so can't you see now is the time to respond to his favor. Now is the day of salvation. We will not place obstacles in anyone's way that hinder them from coming to salvation so that our ministry will not be discredited. Okay, so what are the obstacles that could hinder somebody else from coming to salvation? <clears throat> Paul's here describing his own life and that of Timothy and Titus and those who are with him. But he's really giving an encouragement for all of us. Don't put obstacles in anyone's way. What does that mean? If we as Christians take advantage of the grace God has given us and we just kind of live our life any way we want, what kind of a advertisement, what kind of a testimony, what kind of a of a of a show are we giving to the rest of the world when they look and go, oh my goodness, you call yourself a Christian, but you behave this way. You act like a Christian, but then you, 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 know, you do your business dealings this way. You say you're a Christian, but then this is how you treat your spouse, or this is how you treat your children. And it's like, look, you know, it's not that like we have to be perfect. God's not expecting us to be perfect. Paul's not expecting us to be perfect. And frankly, I don't think the world is expecting us to be perfect, not anybody that's sincere. But we do have to recognize that if we're called to live to a standard that God calls us to, we've got to make sure that we don't have obstacles in our life that are keeping us from sharing and, and being a good advertisement for God and for what he has done in our life. Paul continues and says, because uh, he didn't want your ministry to be discredited, he says, yet as God's servant, servants, we prove ourselves authentic in every way. Then he gives him examples, and these examples are powerful. He goes on and says, for example, and I want us to, to look through this list, because this is a view of what true apostolic ministry looks like. Paul is giving a great description of what it means to live as a Christian and to have your life have meaning to others and to be a good advertisement for Jesus. He goes, here's what he says. We have great endurance in hardships and persecutions. Now, in other words, when we face hardships, when we face challenges and difficulties, Jesus himself said in the Beatitudes, he gave all these blessings, and then he concluded it with saying, 
and blessed are those who are persecuted on account of me. You know, there's a, a reality, and there's a reality in today's culture. And I know we've got a lot of kids that are on their way to school today, and we just want to keep praying for them and praying for blessings in them and the families as they go. But the reality is, as we go into the world, wherever that is, there's going to be times that we're going to face persecutions. It's how we deal with those persecutions, our response to those hardships that help indicate what's really going on in our heart. It says, we've been beaten many times, imprisoned, and found ourselves in the midst of riots. We have endured many troubles, had sleepless nights, and gone hungry. Paul's just saying, look, it hasn't always been easy. There's, there's been challenging times that we've had to go through. And you know, every single one of us has had a challenging time of our life. We may not have been, you know, beaten in the midst of riots or anything like that, but we have challenges, opportunities where we have been falsely accused, times where we have been uh, maybe persecuted, times when a coworker or a friend has kind of rallied against us in some way or mis misused us, lied about us, all of those things. We've all been through those circumstances. It, Paul's saying, look, it's how we respond. Paul continues in verse 6. We have proved ourselves by our lifestyles of purity. Now think about that. A lifestyle of purity. A lifestyle that is centered around having a heart that is pure before God. By our spiritual insights. In other words, not just taking the world at face value, but seeing what's going on behind. We know Paul talks about our battles not against flesh and blood, but it's against <clears throat> the rulers, the principalities, and those of this age. It's against the enemy. So we know that. We have spiritual insights. We can see what's going on in a circumstance. He says, you'll know what we proved it by our patience and by showing kindness. You know, having patience is such a thing today in, in our culture. Just anybody that's patient, you know, you kind of stand out. And then being kind, kind to the, to the clerk that's having a hard time, kind to the person who's struggling in front of us. It says, by the spirit of holiness and by our uncritical love for you. Now think about that as a standard for Christianity, having uncritical love for the people all around us, uncritical love for the people that we're going to face today. It says in verse 7, we commend ourselves to you by our faithful teachings, our truthful teachings rather, by the power of God working through us and with the mighty weapons of righteousness, a sword in one hand and a shield in the other. Now Paul here of course is talking about the sword of the truth and the shield of faith that we carry that he spoke to about in the Galatians. He says, amid honor or dishonor. In other words, whether I'm being honored or whether I'm being dishonored. Whether I'm being treated well or I'm being treated poorly. Whether they're recognizing me for you know, who I am is what Paul's saying, for the spiritual authority that I carry, or whether they're disregarding me completely. In slander or in praise. Whether they're talking bad about me and making up stories about me or whether they're telling me how awesome I am, he's saying even when we are treated as deceivers and impostors, Paul says, we remain steadfast and true. You know, remaining steadfast and remaining true are clear signs of a Christian. Why? Because we know that our, where our help comes from. We're trusting in God and who he is and pressing into that. Verse 9, he says, we are unknown nobodies whom everybody knows. We are frequently at death's door, yet we here, yet here we are, still alive. We have been severely punished, not yet executed. We may suffer, yet in every season we are always found rejoicing. Friends, can we embrace that this morning? That no matter what season of life we're going through, no matter what the challenges are, no matter what obstacles maybe the enemy is trying to throw in our path, let us always be found rejoicing. You know, I think that is one of the greatest testimonies. That is one of the greatest indications of where somebody's faith is, is when it's no matter what's happening, they are rejoicing. They can rejoice in who God is regardless of the circumstances. Paul concludes this little section by saying, We may be poor, yet we bestow great riches on many. We seem to have nothing, yet in reality we possess all things. That's how you can rejoice in the midst of difficulty. My friends at Corinth, he says, our hearts are wide open to you. And we speak freely, holding nothing back from you. If there is a block in our relationship, it is not with us. For we carry you in our hearts with great love. Yet you still withhold your affections from us. So I speak to you as children. Make room in your hearts for us, as we have done for you. And again, Paul is giving a great view here of whether you're, you're withholding your love from us. Well, that's not going to stop us from loving you. Again, what a sign of Christianity. So God, we just pray this morning that you would release your Holy Spirit and you would release your Holy Spirit into each one of us 
and that we would be filled with you today. And God, let us be as Paul has described here, those who are not taking grace for granted, but those who are moving forward, those who are engaging, those who are loving others, those who are pressing through. And Father, whether they're loving us or not, let us carry them in our hearts. And Father, I release a blessing on every child that's going to school today, on every student that's making their way out the door. Bless them and fill them as they're starting the school year. And Father, we pray for all the parents. Give them wisdom and grace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. We love y'all. Have an amazing day. God bless.